Descendant selectors are a useful way to be able to select things in more specific ways, just like we have class selectors uh, and these types of things can come in handy. And so if we take a look at our HTML that we have in this project right now, we could say if we wanted to select something specific that's a descendant without having to add a class to it. And one example of this uh, for me would be in this teal BG area we have right now, where we have a different background color and text color on it. If I wanted to select these strong elements that are in here, because right now we have, uh, if we go and find that here, we have our teal BG inside this div, and then we have a strong here, and I have another strong over here. And I might not want to have to go and select these with their own classes every single time if I always want these strong elements that are inside my teal BG to be styled in a very specific way. So what I can do is in my style sheet here, we can come down and here where I have my teal BG, I like keeping related styles together. So I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna do teal BG and then I'm, I'm gonna put a space. And then after the space, I'm gonna write the other selector that I want, which is my strong. And we'll explain this in a second, but for now, let's just say uh, that we want the color to be yellow because it's gonna stand out and be very obvious that we've changed it. And now we can see that the colors have changed over to yellow there. And the reason this is working, the way that we read this when we have descendant selectors is we have the strong element that is inside of my teal BG here. And we could technically take this like to a further level because my teal BG is inside of another element. So that's inside of a section. So if we wanted to, I could say a strong that's inside of a teal BG that's inside of a section that is inside of your body and your main and all these other things. Uh, I would suggest not doing that though. <laughs> when we're doing these, we want to be select the element you want in the one situation it's in, but be like a specific, but be specific with what you want and don't overdo the selector because sometimes you see people that go overboard with these and they get like six descendant selectors in a row and that actually makes it a lot harder to use them properly and there's other potential issues that can come along as well. So having our strong uh, with the teal BG like this is sort of the furthest I would generally try and bring something like that. I wouldn't try and have multiple descendant selectors here. Uh, and the advantage of doing this is now if ever, you know, I'm not saying this is a nice design, I probably wouldn't make it yellow like this, though if you wanna put a different color that works better with the color scheme, by all means, uh, go for it. But the advantage of doing this is I decide I want this entire section to be switched over. So I come when I say class is equal to teal BG because our classes can be reused in different ways. So this time I'm gonna put it on my section. The entire thing switches and this actually gives us another opportunity to look at a good solution here as well. Uh, but let's say in here we don't have any right now. So in here we could come in and add a strong uh, right there, so strong. And then I can take that closing one refresh my page and right away that's changed to yellow. I don't have to remember, oh, I need to put a class on this now as well. When every single time I want a strong that is inside of my teal BG, I want it to have that color. Uh, this is, as I said, a nice actually accidental uh, one that came up. And now we actually have a bit of a problem because I have my teal text here, which made the text invisible. I wouldn't necessarily change the color of the teal text here uh, just because I've Think that you'd be getting a little bit weird, but we could. We could keep it, if we have a teal BG, maybe it stays teal, but it's much lighter instead. So here in my teal BG, we could do a class selector in the same way, dot teal BG dot teal text, because that is problematic and makes our text invisible to read. And then we could come in with a lighter uh, color. So I'm just gonna write teal here, uh, not to actually use it, but just to get my color picker. And then I could come in and choose like a lighter teal color potentially. And if we refresh, it's not light enough. So I'm just gonna come in with an even lighter one, save, there, it's getting better. I'd probably still even go lighter than that. Um, but anyway, we'll find a color that works. Just as a, a quick example on the type of things we can do. I'm not gonna keep these colors and this set up for future lessons. Uh, we could even, if you wanna practice this a little bit more and you've been following along with the course so far, you could also fix the link using a similar one because our link is now really hard to read as well. So that could be another uh, extra step you could do along the way just to make that readable. And so yeah, we won't necessarily be keeping this long term though I'm going to keep it around for the next lesson if you're following along because we're going to be talking about specificity and descendant selectors are actually playing an important role in how specificity works.